Welcome back. This video is going to show you when, what to do when you buy a used server and you've got to configure it. So if you know nothing about the server, we're going to go through what we look at and how we get into it and how we can prepare it. So first things first, uh, in the previous video, we showed an R730. What we had done is we'd used the LCD in the front to be able to see what the IP address was. Another way of doing it is you could go and get this tool here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but this is uh, called Advanced IP Scanner. And what it does basically is it scans your internal IP addresses, assuming that your iDRAC picked up a DHCP address, meaning an IP address within your environment, then it would show up there. So those are two places you could start. Of course, at any time you can plug in a screen, a keyboard, and a mouse onto the server and go in, into uh, the various parts of it, uh, either through the iDRAC um, or you can go directly into uh, the lifecycle. And in fact, we're going to look at some of the features in there. So for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and log in into this iDRAC. Now you you might say, hey, if it's a brand new machine, I don't even know what the password is. What do I do? Well, this is actually, once I get in, I'll be able to take over, uh, show you what the screen looks like just for recording purposes, but I'll show you how we can go and modify it using the life cycle. And so we're gonna go in and let me just type in the password that I've put in here right prior, because I had this problem with the server since it is a recycled server, I didn't know what the password was. That's obvious that uh, it is a problem in that case. So I apologize, I'm working off a screen slightly to my side here, so, oh no, let me, let me try that again. All right, so right now the server is actually off. I'm hoping it's not gonna make a huge racket when it starts, because they're not known for being quiet. I'll, I'll confess to that. So uh, what we'll do here is we will go ahead and power on the server. Just so you understand, uh, so you go into here, it says power, and you can see it says server status, it is currently off. I could click on power right here. So it shows me all kinds of information, but really what we wanna do right now is um, power configuration and power on and now I click on apply Do you want to execute this and I'm gonna say yes and that's gonna go ahead and start the server now what's the other thing that is important right here and hopefully you can still hear me through the racket is we want to be able to um, see the screen so if I go into actually if I go into overview right here it was there a minute ago okay here we go so what we want is no you're going to stop clicking on stuff. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to go and launch the virtual console preview. Here it is. So I'm going to go ahead and save this to my downloads for a second. And then I'm going to execute it. And I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to run it. I'm going to say continue. Yeah, I'm going to say run, I'm going to say run, there's a lot, <laughs> a lot of uh, runs, 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 but here we go, hopefully, okay, so what we are seeing, let me just bring this over to here, is the actual screen, so now what I want to do is I want to go into the life cycle, so I'm going to have to press F10 here, hopefully I got into it in time, and so we're entering the life cycle controller, and that will allow me to go and both put a specific IP address for the iDRAC and to pin in the password. So that is the first thing you need to do. So we just have to be a little patient while this loads. Um, this portion does take a while though. If you're being asked to set up a server or if you're trying to uh, figure out how much time to block off, you will notice that if you have to do a lot of these steps, uh, you're looking at potentially uh, you know, hours of, uh, you know, get into it. You're going to want to update stuff. You're going to want, so it's going to reboot. And then you'll see there's a lot of waiting around. I and mean, this is just to enter 
uh, the lifecycle controller. So as you can tell, it is a bit laborious. But again, we are dealing with, uh, you know, these components are not used that often. So they're not going to put super speedy, um, I guess, resources available for something that very rarely gets used. And it's mainly at setup. So what we've done now is we've told it to enter the life cycle. We gotta be a bit patient. And here we go. So this is where we would go and do things like firmware and so forth. If we go into settings, let's see if I can remember all the um, hardware configuration. Let me see if I can find System setup. Okay, I'm trying to find where the advanced hardware configuration. I think I may have gone into the wrong one. Okay, so this is where you'd go and launch your firmware updates. Uh, so one of the first things you do want to do when you get the machine anyhow is to do basically a launch firmware upgrade. And all you need to do at that point is click here. Uh, go ahead and click on network shares, for example, and it's going to go and allow you to use HTTPS. You do next and use this. And then what it does is goes to downloads.dell.com and it will go and get you the information on the downloads that are available. And so what it has to do is it has to gather a list of all the components that you have in this particular server. And it has to get all the firmware versions of, you know, controllers, network cards, whole bunch of stuff. And then once it gets that, it then verifies it against what they call the library or the catalog on the other end. And um, so, okay, did not import this time. Do you want to continue? I'm going to say yes to continue. And eventually this will come back with a list. And if there are things to be updated, I highly suggest you update them at this time. Because what happens is once this goes into production or once this has a use, uh, you're going to find that the administrators or the users are going to say, oh, don't turn it off because I'm doing this. And there, there's always some reason why things should never be turned off. I have some clients that turn off their machines perhaps once or twice a year at best, and it becomes uh, laborious and difficult. And then, of course, by the time you do it, there's just so much stuff that you want to do um, on the server whether it's a VMware upgrade or, you know, other things that you, you know, add memory perhaps and, and change drives or add drives. And so, yeah, I mean, you don't want to have to uh, block off a four to six hour uh, window just to be able to do a whole lot of these things. So the more current you are in all these pieces, when you get a chance, the better. Okay, so here we go. So this is what it looks like when you do it. So you basically have all of the different, the current version and the available versions. And in, so in some cases, for example, uh, you've got, you know, driver packs, you've got, um, so as you can tell, even the BIOS here from 2.12.1 to 2.14. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go down this list and we're going to select as much as we can. Uh, I mean, some of them you'll notice are the same, for example, here, BP13G. So that's, that's fine. Here's the Intel. Uh, strangely enough, the Intel is at 20.0 and it says available 19.5. So that one we'll leave alone as well. So we'll just go down the list. So clearly some of these were upgraded. Uh, okay, so the perk is going to be upgraded in this one as well. So we're just going to go ahead and click on apply. It's going to download and then it's going to uh, do these packages one at a time. Now this is going to uh, potentially take a few minutes. Of course, if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing. That really helps us out. We really appreciate that. Naturally, or just in case some of you don't know this, uh, if you do firmware upgrades on the machine, do not turn it off in the middle of the firmware upgrades. It could create a scenario where your machine becomes either unstable or plain unusable. Uh, if you get half of a BIOS in or something like that, you, you will end up with something that is unpredictable and it could potentially just not boot anymore. And that would, I mean, depending on the machine, um, it, it could just trash your machine. You might not be able to use it. So in that case, you'll end up having to work with uh, Dell or the manufacturer, depending what brand you have, 
Um, and you may have to replace the motherboard. You may have to, uh, it depends. I, I've seen all kinds of extremes. Sometimes there are easier ways, of course. I'm, I don't want to paint a picture of everything being uh, terribly complicated at all times. Uh, sometimes there are various switches or various ways of reverting the BIOS back or uh, some machines even have a dual BIOS, basically a type of a backup on another secondary chip where you can load off of that. So again, it depends on the system. It depends on you know that kind of stuff. So here we go. So we are going and it's going to take roughly 20 minutes. So because it's going to take this long, we're going to um, pause this and come back later. All right, so we went ahead and rebooted after the updates, and then we go into the iDRAC settings, and in here, what you'll find is if you go lower down, you're gonna see a user configuration, and this is where you would go and put in the password, and then that's what, uh, whatever you put there is what will become the password. So that's how you set up a new system that you don't know what the password is. So of course, once you've done this, then what you need to do is go into network, and then that's where you could go and either set it up to DHCP, uh, which is not the recommended way of doing it. Uh, ideally, you'd want to put something that is a fixed IP address or a static IP address. But uh, if, you, if this is a lab, if this is a temporary server, uh, you may just, you know, of course, leave it to DHCP, meaning that it gets an automatic IP address from your system. Um, so this would probably get it from another server or from your router or firewall, depending on how that is set up. Now, once you've done here, uh, then what you would do is, since we've pretty much set up everything here, then we could go back and go setting, actually go back, hardware configuration, let's see, configuration wizards. And this is where we now could go into a RAID configuration, go into here, and we could say, okay, well, what do we want to do? We want to create, let's say, a RAID 1. We create a couple drives. So it's like, okay, which drive do you want to use? And this is where we would pick the ones that we want. So we could say, okay, so we want to see all the SSDs. So it, it can tell the difference between the SSDs and the HDDs, or the hard drives. So in this case, we would say, okay, we want SSD. Do you want encryption or not? Uh, these are not encrypted. So we'd say, okay, so select all. So we're going to select basically the zero and the one. So these are 250 gig drives. And you simply say next. And you would give it a name. So at this point, you could say, you know, this or V disk. Actually, it's usually where to put V disk one. And you could cheat a little bit but 250 so you don't exactly excuse me exactly what they are and you can decide if you want to do anything like had odd spares in this case we don't have any other discs so we just say next and once you're done it'll show you what the total is you just click on okay you want to keep going of course it does wipe the disc when you do this so be mindful uh if you're <laughs> boring somebody else's disc or you're using something somewhere uh, don't expect the drive to come back out of the server after this uh still readable are intact. Uh, you may get lucky. Um, I mean, there are potentially ways if you didn't actually overwrite with data of doing something with it, but just don't go there, please. So make sure you've got empty drives or drives that you can format. Don't mind if you lose everything that's on there. So hopefully that's obvious, but just thought I'd point it out because there are people out there that put them in and go, uh, I can't read my data. It's like, well, you just formatted it when you put it into a RAID 1. So um, and RAID 5 will also potentially mess up your drive. So any, uh, any addition to a server, expect the drive to go. Okay, so at this stage, you would be ready to install something. At this point, we've created a single RAID, but this would be sufficient to go and set up an operating system. Now, uh, what I propose or what I suggest is get an ISO, basically, and burn it to um, a USB stick, plop it in, and then when you boot, do it F11, and then that will boot into whatever you're trying to load. Uh, it could be Linux, could be, so if you've got VMware, we've got some videos on VMware installation, and uh, go ahead and check those out. Well, thanks for watching. This wraps it up. I'm Bob Pello and CTO Bob. Write some comments below. We love reading those. And of course, you can check out ctobob.com.
See you in the next video.